I didn't just wake up one day and think, okay, I, I love myself. It was a whole lot of healing and self-love. So when I was a teenager, I was really into beauty pageants. My mum was quite forceful with it. Um, I was told to lose quite a bit of weight and that triggered a really bad eating disorder within me. And I remember just being so consumed by diet, like high fashion, wanted to be that size zero model, but my body frame didn't allow it. So I'd be starving myself, counting calories, drinking water, then weighing myself. It was awful. I was suffering with bulimia, body dysmorphia, and that went on for years. I remember being cabin crew, packing scales on flights, and it just consumed the whole of my life. And as I've got older and more mature, I've, I've grown out of it, but it's been a long and stressful journey. I didn't just wake up one day and think, okay, I love myself. It was a whole lot of healing and self-love. So to get to this place of body positivity, I literally went for a bit of trauma and I, I kind of got, I got pregnant and then I watched my body change. And then I remember waking up one day and my stomach didn't quite look the same, my boobs didn't quite look the same. And I thought to myself, this is irrelevant. It doesn't matter anymore. What is in here, that does matter. But everything external to me was just like a shell. And that's why I embraced my curves, I embraced who I am. And, and I embrace every bit of me. I think in today's society, social media can be a very dark and dangerous place. If I was a younger girl looking at everything that was going on now, I would have been a lost little soul. And I think it's my duty with a platform I do have to spread awareness on topics and that we need to kind of have change on. And it's important for the younger generation to see. So I open up a lot on my Instagram with my posts that I share and the videos that I share. And I'm so grateful for the followers I do have because they also open up to me. I get thousands of messages every week from people that have gone through certain things like grief, loss of friends, loss of parents, suicidal thoughts, baby loss, domestic violence, and eating disorders. Knowing that I can help just one person, that means a lot to me. Number one, embrace what you have. Stop trying to copy everybody else. Stop trying to look towards others on how you value yourself. And it's easier said than done, but the minute we stop comparing ourselves, a lot more and we'll feel better about our, our own selves. Number two, repeating affirmations in the mirror. I'm a huge believer in affirmations. When you're driving, when you're brushing your teeth, just whack out a few like, I'm beautiful, I'm strong. They literally do work. Exercise for your mental health and your mind and your well-being. Don't do it to lose the pounds because everything else will follow when you're right up in there. One of my favorite quotes that I absolutely love. It's actually tattooed on my back in Arabic. It is Miss Dynamite, and I've, I've loved this quote for years. It's, without struggle, there is no progress. So when we go through suffering and we have struggle, and we don't know where we're quite going with life and we feel down, just know that without that, there will be no progress anyway. And with struggle comes growth, so keep going.